Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of April 29th through May 5th. Hmm. How are you feeling post the Scorpio full moon? I am feeling, honestly, I feel a lot of my solar eclipse momentum is starting to dissipate. I'm like, as I'm saying this, I'm hearing like, the deflation of uh, a balloon, like a helium balloon, maybe, or maybe not helium, the helium ones don't make noise, but you know, just the party balloons, how if it like slowly deflates and it makes this like sound, that's what I'm hearing right now <laughs> as I'm checking in with my own energy. And personally, that Scorpio full moon activated me and just ways that I had not even, I didn't foresee um, in such amazing ways. And now on the other end of it, I feel like exhausted. And I am funny enough dealing with allergies. As most people have been saying, I've been hearing this a lot. I don't really have allergies, but that's normally me. But I feel the past, definitely the past two years, I can't recall back any further than that, but the past two years, I have been feeling the shift in energy in reference to like my, my face, right? Which feels very Aries to me and just the inflammation and whew, there's a lot going on. So there might be a moment where I have to pause the video and blow my nose or you might hear me sniffle a little bit and that that's where I am. And I'm feeling, I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty tired. And you know, the way I'm feeling is also aside from the allergies, it's also, you know, right on time as far as my, my cycle. So I am honoring the organic energy and I'm, I'm going to not make a thing about it. So um, just a few announcements. Today is April 28th and I'm recording this and there is one week, one week left to sign up and join us for our Lucid Dream Circle. I will close the registration at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, May 5th. If my, hopefully my dates are, act yeah, because the 7th is on Tuesday. So May 7th is the first meeting of our Lucid Dream Circle. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited and looking forward to it. So I hope you decide to join again. If you want to register, you want to learn more, you can visit my website, uraniauniverse.com. And on the front page, you'll see, you know, um, a, a mention or a future post about the, the Lucid Dream Circle. There's also a tab on my website for the Lucid Dream Circle. So it's really easy to find. If you have more questions, you can, um, there's a contact uh, box or contact page on my website. So you can ask me questions via there, Instagram, comment on this video. I am very accessible to you. So um, there's that. And yeah, and also on my, there's so much going on on my website. I really am slowly moving or shifting more of my focus to my own space. Um, and of course I love YouTube. So I'm going to be expanding more here on YouTube and putting more attention and intention and love into this space. And slowly just Instagram is, is a whole lot and I get sucked in in the ways that I don't like. And so, yeah, I just want to honor the own space that, that the sacred space that I've created personally for my shares, my readings, my services and all of that. So that's uraniauniverse.com. And um, there's a, there is actually a dream bank there if you want to share your dreams. And also if you want to read the dreams that I share, as well as there's my blog where I give, a, like I have a pyramid meditation on the blog. Let's see, what else do I have there? Um, you know, I'm just sharing what's coming up, right? And I'm organically flowing. So I feel, yes, I'm going to be put a lot, putting a lot more focus on my website. And so if you aren't already a member of my website, it's absolutely free. The only reason, the main reason why I have membership is because I want to engage and I want you all to be able to post on my website. And in order to do that without worrying about bots and all of those things, I created, you know, a member group. So it's totally free and I would love to have you. And... 
Also, I want to say it is official. I am Urania Harp legally. Um, all of that finally went through and that actually, as far as the approval for the petition to change my name legally, that came through, I believe it was the day before the Scorpio full moon. I went to pick up the papers and everything on the day of the Scorpio full moon. And then a few days after that, I went to the DMV and got everything, you know, figured out. And I want to just say that uh, it is, I didn't realize how much of a tie I had to my ex-husband, like still carrying his last name, even though we've been divorced for almost 10 years now, as well as just the energy and the weight of my birth name, how that just didn't identify with who I am now. And it just didn't fit. And now that I'm just completely free, my last name essentially is, is just the OG. It's, it's the first of, I don't know. Um, but there's no attachments to any masculine energy. And it's actually, um, paying homage to my grandmother, my great grandmother, because their, their maiden name is Harper. And I consider taking that last name or my grandmother's maiden name is Harper and my my great grandmother that's her marital name I think her last name was Dauphine or something which I was like ooh, that's cool I didn't even think about it but anyways um I consider taking Harper but again I wanted to disassociate from that masculine energy not that you know I don't have anything I'm not like against you know masculine energy or anything like that is just I want my own person I don't really I don't have a close connection to obviously my great grandfather. And so why am I taking his last name? Why do I need to take anyone's last name? Why can't I just make my own? And so I, I chopped off the ER and now it is harp, which works perfectly with Urania. And I do feel like I am stepping into this, uh, practice or this, this embodiment of sacred sound in a, in an interesting way. And I'm, I, that's all I can share on it because I have no idea how it's unfolding, but that was a part of the activation with sacred sound. So it makes sense. All right, you guys. So let's get into the cosmic climate. Thank you for, you know, watching and listening to all of that. <laughs> I'm going to regularly, if there's, if I'm talking a lot in the beginning, because I don't know, it's probably been at least five minutes. I'm going to regularly put a timestamp to just get to the cosmic climate. So check that out in the videos. If you don't want to hear me ramble, then, and you'd rather hear me ramble about astrology, you know, check the description to see if there's like a chapter, like if I, you know, set a timestamp of like, here is cosmic climate. All right. So um, I'm going to start with the, speaking of organic energies and honoring that, I'm going to start with what came to me today three times. So every day I pull a tarot card or a tar three tarot cards as I like the threes. And Mayat came to me again, which this card is so beautiful. And the keyword here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's adjustment. Oops, there we go, right there. Adjustment. And when we received this a while ago, I want to say it was the Libra full moon. And there was, of course, a, a focus on balance, but just this essence of neutrality where the scales are coming back into alignment, right? And what I was getting at that time is that we are in, uh, we are in a moment and I feel moving forward where we write the story from here on out, right? And so if you are someone naturally who is watching this, you are like the, you're, you're essentially reaping what you have sown in a high vibrational sense. So this feels like really good karma, things coming back around in a really powerful way for you. And so you have a major say in what, in what way in which these scales will, you know, tilt, right? And we have the feather of truth and we have the heart, right? And essentially the, the, the heart should be lighter than the feather, according to the myth. So that might be something to think about as well and like what that can mean for you. But I think I, um, so my yacht came forth. I don't remember what I was doing earlier, but it definitely came forth. Um, I think I just saw her in passing on like social media or something after having this card and reflecting on it. 
And then as I was preparing and getting everything set up for the Cosmic Climate to record, I saw on my YouTube, there was Egyptian music and it was it was anchored or centered around my yacht and, the, and truth and justice and balance and healing and all of those things. And so I listened to that before I you know started this video. And so I really feel this strong presence of just balance and connecting to truth and connecting to cosmic law, divine law. And being in a, alignment of that, structuring your world around that, in a sense, your own reality, as that is what will keep you, you know, in alignment or in the direction of the desires and the intentions that you or your wishes, right, that you are seeking to bring to fru fruition. And with this energy here, yeah, what's standing out to me again is adjustment and knowing that, and this is like a personal message for me, but, you know, it's not always going to be high, high, high. Like I was borderline manic on the Scorpio full moon and into the next day too. I was just going, going, going. And now in this moment, I am on the other end of the spectrum and I'm doing my best not to feel a way about it. And this card is reminding me that, you know, maybe th there is like this, what is it? The ebb and flow. I guess I should be like more like that. The ebb and flow, the turning of the wheel, you know, what must come up, what goes up must come down and just like the cycle. Right. And there is this, this act of adjustment or needing to twerk something to, you know, possibly get into alignment. So I definitely feel that energy here. And so this week, speaking of just <laughs> Libra energy and balancing really, um, Venus, as of May 20 or sorry, April 29th, Venus will move into Taurus. And that is, that feels like the stability, <laughs> the emotional security, that the groundedness that I desire, and I'm sure a lot of you desire that as well, especially coming out of that eclipse energy. And this is essentially the last week we have to clear and to just reflect on what has come up during that Aries eclipse, as well as just eclipse season as a whole. As the following week, we have that new moon in Taurus, which is on May 7. So I we're already, the sun's already in Taurus. We have Venus moving into Taurus. And then we'll have the new moon in Taurus. And it's just gonna feel really, really good and grounded and just very stable, very secure. So I personally am going to be leaning more into that energy. And of course, we had Jupiter and Uranus have their conjunction there. Uranus has been transiting Taurus for almost seven years now. It's been a whole big thing in Taurus. So I don't know, it's something about Venus moving into Taurus and also the moon being there in which it just feels like coming home to mother's arm, like the security of the mother and being able to just finally like release and let go of, you know, any like put your guard down, basically exhale, let go of any, you know, resistance or any kind of armor that you've been wearing, whatever it is, it's just like coming home and, and feeling into your your comfort and your safe zone, you know? And some of us, like when it comes to the mother, we didn't have that experience. I know personally, I did not have that experience with my mother, my grandmother, yes. And I am learning to feel that within myself. And once, as I'm starting to feel this within myself, I'm opening up more and more to others, but it's really, really hard. And this is this is something that you know this might be a bit of a, a lesson and a theme for Taurus season. So I really like the fact that Venus is moving into Taurus. It feels really, really secure. Venus is coming home after all of this has happened. And it's, you know, she's coming home to restore the energy to bring things into harmony back into balance. And, you know, of course, just as this card was mentioning, there is going to be, you know, necessary adjustments that are needing to be made in order to bring things back into balance in that Taurus element of our of our lives. And so, you know, looking to where Taurus is in your chart 
and getting a sense of, you know, we had that tower moment. <laughs> we had the tower moment there. We've had, um, I was going to say we had an eclipse there. We didn't have an eclipse there, not this year, but there's been a lot going on there. And so what can we, you know, what do we take with us or what can, what have we learned from that? Right. And what can we bring into, um, what can we anchor in, um, as far as uh, tourist parts of our life? Okay. And what else? Yeah. And so another amazing transition this week is that the day after Venus moves into Taurus, we have Mars moving into Aries. So on May 30th, Mars moves, moves into Aries and Mars is at home, right? Mars is feeling comfortable. So we have Venus and Mars in their comfort space at home and just being able to let down their guard a bit. There's, there is work to do. There is like mess to clean. There's adjustments that need to be made. But at the end of the day, we are coming home to a deep, deep part of ourselves. Right. And again, it's, it's bringing me back to, to my yacht where the scales, like things coming back around or truth being revealed and just things coming into balance, right? And so we're given the opportunity to make necessary adjustments to bring elements back in, into balance by being in our comfort zone, right? And so while Venus and Taurus is, is kind of centered around bringing, you know, elements back into balance, adding, bringing beauty to uh, this part of your chart, bring, bringing, you know, sensuality and just loving energy, unconditional love, nourishment, all of those things, just really, really good high vibes to this Taurus part of our chart for nourishment, for grounding and for stability with Mars and Aries. This is more so I'm getting a sense of serving this part of our lives, right? Because this, this part of our lives, Aries really went through it, right? With that solar eclipse, just like really intense energy. there, very activating, very catalyzing for a lot of us. And so with Mars there, Mars isn't necessarily the energy that's like, oh, like, come give me a big hug and let me like, what's your favorite meal? Do you need some water? Do you need some tea? You know, Mars is not that energy. Mars is really wanting to just really be in the present moment to feel into the passion, into fire, into desire, and to just be able to be free and just act on what inspires, you know, what inspires you essentially that is Mars and Mars and Aries even more so where it's like very in the moment, very like just ready to take a lead and, you know, jump into something or just follow your inspiration and act on that inspiration. Right. And so the element of what we, the experience we had with the solar eclipse in Aries is still with us. Right. And I definitely feel it being very active with Mars and Aries. I feel that, the solar eclipse, you know, struck the match here. It was the catalyzing energy to take either a leap of faith or to step into, you know, something or to really initiate that. Or maybe it just initiated you as who you are and who you're becoming. And now with Mars here, Mars is picking that energy up and like running with it in a sense. Like Mars is, is coming forth to essentially help us to, to act on that inspiration, to follow up with what had been catalyzed or what had been initiated when we had that solar eclipse, right? And so there's still some activity here in, in Mars, as far, in, in Aries. And also we have Mercury there too. And Mercury is going to start to gain some speed as well and to move forward, right? So we have the ideas, hopefully we have the clarity in reference to how we want to approach Aries energy within our lives, or whatever it is that we're feeling that we have a strong passion and desire to initiate or just being independent and being free. And, you know, with, with Mercury, there was that, um, that teaching, that experience of self-advocacy and really utilizing words of empowerment, of self-empowerment and being able to speak your truth. Again, bringing us back to the Mayat piece, being able to speak your truth. And as Mars has is coming out of Pisces and entering into Aries, it's like, did you learn an effective way of speaking your truth? 
and speaking from a place of power while also holding compassion, right? And by also doing it in a way that is energetically felt, um, you know, and not, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you can communicate with your intention without, you know, like really like powerfully going off, right? You can say it in a way that like, it's received energetically and understood, right? With like discipline, discernment, whatever it is that you're trying to convey, like that is understood even more so on an energetic level, but through the words, like the vibration, through the intention and vibration, through what it is that you're speaking. So, you know, that's something we'll probably begin to, or will continue to, to master as Mercury and Mars are in Aries together. And again, I feel that this, this stability, this is a focus on stabilizing the, um, what has been initiated in both Taurus and in Aries parts of our chart, because with Taurus, as we had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, that opened up some doors that um, brought forth some opportunities. So how do we move forward into that, right? How do we like stabilize um, the energy that's necessary, make necessary adjustments so that we can feel comfortable and feel confident in, in our power and moving forward with what it is that has initiated in those parts of our life. So um, another important event happening this week is uh, Pluto stationing retrograde in Aquarius. That's a big one. So before I get into that, I do want to show the Oracle cards for this week, the Oracle messages. And wow, I just got hit with a wave of like heat in my face and whew, feeling tired. I'm so glad I'm doing this right now because if I would have waited to, <laughs> to do it later, I, it wouldn't have gotten done. So I'm just going to take a second and you can take a second with me to just pause and I'm going to relax my my everything here, my face, my mouth, my nose. Wow. You guys, I do not like being under the weather. That's an interesting term, under the weather. Okay. Whew. All right. So the Oracle cards this week are really interesting because this energy feels a lot different than what I'm feeling for this week. Right. And I'm just trusting the divine. I I mean, the messages came through really clearly when I saw these. And then when I looked at the astrology, I was like, how does that connect? And so what I think is happening here with this message is that we are receiving guidance on how to move forward with what has been initiated in our within our lives right now. And yes, we can I can point it back to Taurus and Aries. I think you all know that I'm I'm referring to that, but whatever's coming up in your life right now where you're feeling initiated, where you feel that you are being guided to move forward into or move towards, this is pertaining to that or this message, right? So essentially, this is giving us the message on how to manifest our desires for the month of May. And I feel more specifically for this within this Taurus lunar cycle. So it's not only going to be May, but it's going to be moving more into the duration of Taurus, um, the, the Taurus uh, lunar cycle, which begins May 7th and will probably end some around, sometime around June, the early time of June, right? And June's going to be a busy, busy, busy dynamic month, one of the busiest months of the year. So I'm really excited. We got Venus Kazemi. We have Jupiter moving into Gemini. We have, um, I think, Venus and Jupiter conjunction. There's some other things happening as well. I think Mercury, no, not Mercury Kazemi. Maybe Mercury Kazemi? Hmm. But nonetheless, Venus can see me. Did I say that? There's just so much going on. So I'm actually really excited. Anyways, we'll see what how it all unfolds, right? But from now, from or this is giving us insight. So really this week, we want to begin to clear space to 
bring in also as we're clearing, we want to be in awareness what is in our space that is supportive, that is stabilizing us, that is grounded, and that's also inspiring us to move forward, right? So I'm considering Venus and Mars, Venus and Taurus, Mars and Aries, right? That's major. And I'm hearing that freaking balloon deflating. And while that's not necessarily has to be the energy of feeling deflated, but what I'm also thinking about is the disseminating moon, right? That the, the waning gibbous phase where the moon is so full. And then once it reaches this next phase, the energy is slowly beginning to dissipate, right? And that's how we're starting this week with out with is that di disseminating moon, I believe in Capricorn, and then midweek on Wednesday, we will reach the the waning half or the waning, yeah, the half moon, the waning half moon in Aquarius. So, and that is also in the territory of Pluto retrograde. But before I get there, the dominant energy for this week is inspiration with, hold on, let me see, Ooh, whoops. So I'm going to get the glyphs in here for the picture. There we go. But so we have inspiration, uh, Mercury and Pisces, and we have the dancer here. And what's interesting is that the moon kind of looks like the eclipse, right? Like it looks like a full moon and it looks like there's a shadow behind it. So I don't always read this energy as that, but it looks like, uh, let's see if I can get it to it just giving me eclipse five. So I think it's pointing back to the eclipse, right? And just that, that energy of inspiration and with Mercury, again, it, it's, while it's in Pisces, it's, there's like the, the words of empowerment, self-advocacy and doing that with, with, with compassion, doing it with grace. Um, and I'm going to go to my, my, um, my interpretation of these cards, my writing of the interpretation, you guys, I'm like, really, who talk about a deflated balloon. Um, okay. So yes, how to manifest our desires in the month of May. So with this Mercury in Pisces, and again, if you want to see my, um, my personal interpretation just check out the community post, the community part of my channel and you can read all of this here and see the the cards okay so the solar the airy solar eclipse energy is still present to inspire you keep one foot in this world and one foot out and the other out yes yeah, so this is major so this is actually a bit of dream energy coming through uh, if you guys haven't checked out any of my dream chats that I've been doing with Alexis, definitely check it out. We have a dream live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. This week, we're going to have a third guest. My friend Jace will be joining us again, who is a master lucid dreamer as well. And we're going to share some dreams and interpret them. But nonetheless, last week, we talked about um, just how to make your lucid dreams last longer. Well, I came across in a, a book that I was listening to and it mentioned doing a pirouette in your dream, right? So that kind of made me think about it. And one of the, the main points as well to, well, let me just say the pirouette element was to help you to keep your focus and keep your lucidity. So it's like, your focus and, you know, very connected to your body. And so the whole idea is having one foot in the dream and one foot out or one foot in your conscious mind and one foot in, in the dream. So you want to be of the, you want to be in the dream, but not of the dream. Um, just like you want to be in the world, but not of the world. Right. So what I'm getting as far as <laughs> the Oracle message is it made me think about that with this dancer and she's in a uh, stance as if she, she can do a pirouette at any moment, or maybe she's coming out of it is that we want to keep our one foot in this reality. So in the present moment, that's great. But we also want to begin to step into the reality that we desire. And so this might be taboo to say, but the daydreaming, daydreaming is, is, amaz is an amazing aspect or practice to 
really help you with manifestation because when you're daydreaming and if you can just really honor the moment and don't let your mind start to go into the what ifs or no that's not going to happen it's just just a daydream it's just you know a fantasy but if you can really just embrace the moment of the daydream and really take yourself there and then once you feel that and you feel good you know step out of it and go on about your business. But by doing that, you are able, you will put yourself in a vibration and you'll begin to visualize and magnetize that reality to you, right? And it, it might not be, it might, it will come more than likely in stages, right? So you might connect with someone that day who might bring you closer to that, or you might read something or, you know, just hear a message that will give you that further inspiration. And so that's what I'm feeling with this card is that we want to have one foot in this reality, in this present moment. And we also want to have another foot, like we're balancing the energy um, to have that that other foot in, in the new reality, the new earth, so to speak, whatever it is that you see for yourself and where you're going, right? So we got to allow that to keep you know, that, um, you know, the ins inspired to inspire as well, <laughs> if that makes sense. So hopefully that makes sense. And I feel this energy really connected with Mars and Aries. That could be like a bit of a lesson of Mars coming from Pisces where yes, there was an element of allowing the daydream, allowing the fantasy or the actual dreams to inspire us to really keep that fire lit and to keep going, right? And now that we have Mars and Aries at, at this time or this week, then we can begin to really start to just leap into this reality or the life that we desire, or, you know, just do the things that we desire to bring forth that manifestation. So that is pretty much the dominant message, the dominant energy for this week. So then the um, second energy here is how many times have we seen this? I think this is the fourth time now, right? So speaking of stabilizing, anchoring in, grounding, we have that secure number of four, vibration of four, seeing this four times, Venus and Cancer. I literally had to look at the ephemeris. I'm like, what is happening? When is, okay, Venus is going to be in Cancer in what, July or August, and then what else is going on then, right? And I didn't really pick up on anything that was standing out to me specifically as far as like the actual astrology. If you all know of anything or can double check my um, timekeeping and things of that nature, definitely check that out and let me know. However, um, what I'm getting with this is that there's still something that hasn't been birthed yet, right? Again, there's another layer of something manifesting. There's a big manifestation that's coming forth. So this is what led me to the realization that this is helping us, these, this is guidance to help us in manifesting what big thing is here, right? We've been manifesting a lot, you guys. I manifested my, of course, my name change. That took some time. That was big. I also manifested the oral surgery that I needed because I couldn't find an oral surgeon in my network. So basically I had to go out of network and pay out of pocket, like a thousand dollars. I don't like that. I manifested that. <laughs> and I found an oral surgeon local that I trusted. And I wrote all of this down and it manifested. I wrote all of it down with my, uh, uh, regarding my, my name change and all that and it manifested. And so we've manifested so much so far and there's something there's something else there there's something big manifesting we are birthing something epic is what i wrote and so the next oracle message here is taurus and or the moon and taurus with exaltation i think we've seen this a few times this actually might be the third time second or third time maybe and so like again my friends look at this this is the lunar cycle that we're stepping into. The moon is exalted in Taurus. It is abundant. It is fulfilled. It is secure. It has just the solid ground environment to just nourish all the cycles, the moods, the vibes of the moon. And it's, it's just a beautiful feeling. And then insert Venus being there with 
with the moon and it's just so pleasant you know like the goddesses are coming home or you know venus is already there and this is the goddesses the the moon goddesses like most celebrated home right it's the place in which she's she's exalted right she's in high honor and venus the host right the guide the you know I I don't want to say ruler in this case because it don't doesn't sound as sweet, but basically she's the host of Taurus and she's home to welcome in the moon. So how beautiful is that? So I'm just feeling into that energy. And again, this is in order to to manifest, bring forth this this big desire. What we're being guided to, I already spoke here with the inspiration and having one foot in this world and one foot in the new world or the new reality and being able to allow the daydream and the fantasy, just the daydreaming about what that would be regularly, we that allow that to inspire us, right? So really um, that will help to manifest this big, um, big thing coming through. And then with this moon in Taurus, this is... Um, this is guiding us to secure and modulate our emotions. So again, my dream world, my dream practice is literally blending in with my waking world practice, with my spiritual practice as a whole. I'm not surprised, but that was also another thing that we talked about as far as how do we, you know, maintain lucidity or master, yeah, maintain lucidity in our dreams. How do we make the lucid dream last longer? And the main Thing, the main technique was to modulate your emotions, to keep your emotions in check, to secure them, to balance the energy. Again, with Mayat bringing us the the um, the practice of balance, right? To keep be calm, be chill. You know, you might find yourself. It's okay if you you know you get really excited or you get really mad. That's fine. But the awareness and the ability to bring yourself back to center, to bring yourself to a peaceful, calm state. And to ground yourself in that is what will really allow for this big thing to manifest, right? And do this in a way as well that um, you're also utilizing your six senses, right? So tapping into sensuality and allowing that to help you to modulate your emotions is a, is a fun way to do this. So I made some essential oil or not essential oil, but an anointing oil. Um, with sweet almond oil and pine. And I also threw in a little bit of rose oil for my own personal stash. And oh my gosh, like that definitely brings me to a state, a state of peace. It actually in itself as well, up like uplifts my vibration and just my feeling. And it feels, it's like fantasy in a bottle for me. <laughs> and so any little thing like utilizing your senses, maybe it's touch. And I think I talked about this before, like wearing a nice fabric, um, Actually, I talked about this in an email, subscriber email, but I might put this as a blog post because I think this is a major, major theme for this Taurus lunar cycle. So I'm definitely going to do that. Um, but yeah, so upholding and embodying a high vibration is a way in which to manifest um, this big thing coming through. So Pluto retrograde. Wow. Okay. I can't spend a lot of time on this because who knows how long this video has been already. And I love you guys so much because I've been very long winded on these cosmic climates. Usually I keep them at like 20 minutes, but lately it's been, you know, 40, 40 plus. So Pluto will station retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius on May 2nd, the day before on May 1st, Venus will make a conjunction to Pluto. Wow. And you know what's coming to mind? I feel like I should do, I'm going to do a separate video on Pluto retrograde because I don't want to try to like skim through it. And now things are coming forward. May 1st is Beltane. Really, it's what, April 30th night, the night before leading into May 1st. And then that night is Beltane, it is the opposite end of the wheel of, which is on um, the other end is Samhain, right? So Halloween, we know this to be the points in which the veil is really thin. Well, on May 1st, we have Venus making a square, a point of conflict with uh, Pluto before Pluto 
stations retrograde, right? So Pluto is holding its power at two degrees of Aquarius. So if you have anything within those early degrees, like I would say between zero and five, zero and six, this is a big deal. And I'm one of them. So <laughs> here we are. And so Pluto is the planet that essentially is the guardian of the secrets of insights, the guardian of the unconscious realm within and without. And it just, I feel when it's stationed like this and also makes a connection to another planet, especially a personal planet, especially one of those major aspects like a square, which is not super comfortable. It's a, it's an uncomfortable talk about adjustments, adjustment type connection. I feel that something is unveiled, something is revealed, right? In reference to our unconscious, right? So it could be our fears, it could be trauma, it could be suppressed energy. Oh, I feel a sneeze coming on. And it could also be like some sort of divine insight, divine revelation, like some sort of, you know, insight to the future, right? Um, so anything can come forth through this, Pluto connection with Venus, maybe we'll gain some insight to our, um, to the Taurus parts of our chart, right? That's really been going through it. That really just had this major event happen in, in Taurus, right? Between Jupiter and Uranus, which brought forth opportunity. So maybe Venus making this square to Pluto will, you know, give us some sort of hidden insight that will help us move forward with the Taurus parts of our lives and Aquarius, right? Because Aquarius I've been getting is really, especially with Pluto and Aquarius, I've been getting, this is the kind of the hub, the anchor, the, the, the space for that intentional community for the birthing of the new earth essentially. And so there's a major key that might be revealed here with this Pluto stationing retrograde, right? And also the whole retrograde cycle because Pluto will begin its retrograde cycle on May 2nd at two degrees of Aquarius. And then it will station direct, meaning it will end its retrograde cycle on October 11th, right? I believe that is that. Let me just double check. I did write it. Um, yeah, October 11th. I'm like, they couldn't do it October 10th. Divine, you couldn't give us 10, 10. Um, but let's see, maybe it'll be 10, 10 for some of you. Let's see, 10, 11. Oh no, cause it's at night. So 8, 31 PM on October 11th, but nonetheless, and out of like all the planets, right? Pluto is making the most connection with uh, Venus. So there's something here with this Venus and Pluto connection. And so I'm going to let this marinate a little bit. I'm going to meditate on this and see what comes forth <clears throat> early in the week. But I definitely, I did write how, um, so we have Pluto, Pluto and Aquarius is where the, the retrograde cycle will begin. And then it will end with Pluto and Capricorn. So we, Going back to review some things in reference to Capricorn, um, it will get all the way to, I think, 29 or 28 degrees of, let's see. All right, 29 degrees. Okay, 29 degrees of Pluto. So just in there for a second. I'm just ready to be done with Pluto and Capricorn. I have so much in Capricorn. I'm just like, it's it's been going through this, this transformation, this metamorphosis. I know you guys, I'm sure you feel it too in your Capricorn parts of your chart. And this is like the karma, the cycles fully completing, things coming back around, you know, the karmic ties being cleared. And so this is the clearing and this is the ability to begin to, you know, write our own story in the sense of how does like, almost like writing our own destiny, I feel. And we have, I know on September 1st, Venus will square another conflicting connection between Venus and Pluto as Pluto is in Capricorn and Venus is in Libra. So we have a bit of the old energy coming into conflict 
And we have the new energy coming into conflict and it's all within this Venus and Pluto energy, right? And so um, this is really interesting. So I'm gonna do a separate video because my mind is already going and I'm really excited to receive more insight on this. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please like it if you enjoyed this. Please share with someone if you think that they would like this as well. And please subscribe to my channel so you can be in the know of all the things I've been sharing because it's not just astrology, it's dreams, it's tarot. Also, don't know if you saw, but I had posted a lot, a replay of an Instagram live that I did with my friend Mary. And her and I were feeling into this cosmic egg, like the fertilization of the cosmic egg by the divine light, aka sperm divine sperm, divine intelligence, and just this revelation that we shared together that just kind of came out of nowhere. And it's just us having fun, but it really, there was a lot of, there was a lot of truth and a lot of light and love in that. And it was resonating with the people that were watching. It was a really good chat. And we also really integrated this into what we were perceiving for the new earth and what that even means and for light workers. So if you consider yourself to be a light worker, to be here of service to humanity, to the planet, and are really, you know, putting a lot of energy into creating and building intentional community, definitely check out, check that out. I already uploaded it. So the replay's there and it was an interesting and fun chat. So thank you, everyone. I am looking forward to seeing you or chatting with you soon as I hope to upload the Pluto retrograde video and also definitely check out the dream live stream this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be really good. Join us live so you can engage and share your insights and interpretation. Take care.